Okay. Sorry. Hello, hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. This is Lolly, and I am back with another Crafts Gone By in my series. This is, who are you? Well, my daughter, Michelle. She's the daughter, Michelle. We are here to talk about worry dolls, and I don't know if you've ever heard of them before. Um, they're a little easy, easily portable craft that we used to do years ago, and mm -hmm. what made me think of them was, well, my daughters used to do a lot of them, too. You were the one who said something about, you know, I'd like to make those again, and so we, we kind of found our stash, our collection of worry doll and worry doll paraphernalia, Mm -hmm. And thought we would discuss them, show them to you, and show you how to make one. So Michelle's going to give you a little history of worry dolls so you know where this whole idea comes from. <clears throat> <clears throat> worry dolls have their origin in Guatemala. In traditional modern times, worry dolls are given or lent to sorrowful children. They would tell their doll about their sorrows, fears, and worries, then hide it under their pillow during the night. After this, the child will literally sleep over the whole thing. At the next morning, all sorrows are said to have been taken away by the worry doll. Worry dolls also have, have also played a role in modern pediatrics and child, child psychiatry. Some counselors have offered a worry doll to a child as some kind of imaginary but trustworthy listener and contact person. The doll in turn will work for psychiatrists, psychologists, educators, and parents as some kind of agent and troubleshooter between child and adult. Today, worry dolls are sold in huge quantities in Guatemala. Nuns and poor children sell them to churros as souvenirs. The dolls are quite popular since they're so small and thus easy to carry around. And she added her own P.S. to that. They're also easy to lose. <laughs> Gotta keep a close eye on them. So let's, uh, yeah, they tend to wander off, don't they? Sure. I just want to hold up a couple here to show you what we're talking about. They're made, uh, our version is made out of toothpicks. Okay, let me get that focus. These are made out of toothpicks and floss, meaning embroidery floss, not dental floss. Yeah, dental floss wouldn't work. So um, they're colorful, they're bright, they're really imaginative. And as crafters, we could use these for embellishments. I've seen where someone made several different worry dolls and put them together on a, like a bar pin. And then it, it could be a nice little brooch, something to give to a friend. But they're the right size for some paperclip art and all sorts of uses for uh, embellishments on them. Just a one that's on a pin. And, and yeah, this one is a large worry doll. And we're going to show you how to make one of these out of a pen. So um, I know this is having a hard time focusing. So we are going to now flip the view around and show you uh, the camera down focused on the worry dolls. Okay, so this is actually a little container that one of my other daughters had for her worry doll collection, pens in order to make these, and I'll show you, we're going to make one today. These are cute little pens, and we did a women's uh, retreat at our church in which we gave one to each woman there. It was really a fun project. Really cute. And she didn't really have a whole lot of collection of worry dolls. She's got all of the uh, embroidery floss. She's got a, a random loose toothpick in here and she has this. I think she was marking on her toothpicks where to change colors. I'm not sure about that. Michelle, however, has in her little bucket, she's got several that have already been made. She can put them on the, put them on the white here so they can really see. And I'm going to zoom in while she's doing that so you can see some of the detail on these. We'll move that over there. Look, I love the jumper. Isn't that adorable? Don't don't ask me who made each one. I'm not sure. I know I didn't do this guy. Yeah. That would have been too intricate. Interesting hat. And there's the other ones. This one, the curly hair. this one had a ponytail mm -hmm. on this side and it went out or <laughs> lost the ponytail. Yeah, curly hair. Right here. I see this one has variegated, um, you know, the color changing floss there just a whole bunch of so floss. you see this one has pants jeans look at the hair there's so many different options on hair this one has a long braid ponytail to the side suspenders I think dana made most of these ones yeah and the other thing was um besides something that's really fun to do in uh, a nice little project we had a family gathering look at the bun almost wow I think Aunt Anne made some of these. We had a family gathering, and we had um, we just brought all these supplies and laid them out there. And instead of just sitting around staring at each other, um, we ended up some had this available for people to make. Here's an idea of how to make the curly hair. If you take a toothpick, 
and soak the embroidery floss and then wrap it tightly around the toothpick until it dries, then you end up with these curls. Isn't that cute? So you can add curls to their hair, to the uh, to their head. I don't know what the straight pin is here for, but um, I don't remember. It's been so long since we've done this. These ones are square toothpicks, but I see a lot of these have round toothpicks, and I'm not sure which ones were better, except that with the square ones, I think it's easier to glue them together. And I think what we did, plus it's it's good to have scissors, good to have scissors that can cut through these toothpicks. And so I know we had the legs like this, and I think what we did, Michelle might remember too. It's been a long time. I didn't get those quite even. You know, you don't want to use your really good scissors. These are the Tim Holtz ones that cut through a lot. So one of the things you can do is to take a body and glue the two legs on either side like this if you want your legs separated. But I think for the most part, what we were doing was just gluing them together like that at the top. And I think the square ones really are easier to glue together like that. And you can see one of them had pointy feet, this one, but the others, the feet have been cut off just like that. Not feet, but you know, otherwise it's too pointy. And if you use a glue such as um, Eileen's Tacky Glue, or uh, I can't remember the name of it. Um, I will write it in in the description uh, to, to glue these together. And you can see about how tall these are. They're too tall. So I think the head, though, came out through the middle right here, didn't they? I'm looking at the height of these. The shoulders need to be cut off, too. And I think the head got glued in between those like that. And then the arms were two different. No, there there you go. Bodies. So I'm going to put these down so you can see what I'm talking about. We have to think through this again because it's been so long. So I'm going to separate these so you can see there's a head. There's the body and legs. And then as you're going along, you wind the floss up, 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 change colors as you want. And then you want to also glue the arms in right about there. So you have shoulders. So you're basically just gluing all of these toothpicks together, but we always wound the floss up to the shoulders and then glued the, the arms on, oops, like that. And then added an extra bit of floss around the shoulders like that, almost like a bit of a shawl. Very interesting. And you can use whatever color of um, floss you want. Here's, uh, I don't know what this is going. Oh, someone, here's how someone was making curly hair. Excuse me for interrupting and my, myself. <laughs> they were making curly hair. They wrapped this around and tied a twist tie around it so it, to hold it until it dried. But you, anyway, as I was saying, you could use whatever color you want for the skin tone. Um, so it doesn't have to always, you know, these two are different colors. That's more like an ivory. It's more like a peachy color. But you can use whatever you have in your supplies. So let's look at these pins now. We have the, this one is missing the hair. This one has the hair. And this is not floss. This is uh, in the uh, doll sections at like Hobby Lobby. I know I've seen them where they have where you could buy this pre-made. It just feels like some kind of a nylon you know, pre-curled doll hair, and you just we just put a big dollop of glue there and put a mat of the curls down on top of that. So with this one, you need a pen. Now, these are, um, stick pens are the best. These are so old, I'm not even sure that, <laughs> that they're going to write. So let's, good old big pen, huh? Nope, they're pretty old and it's not writing. So I am going to get a pen that does write, and we will come back. So this is Liquid Fusion. It also works pretty well. I found another pen. This is a big pen, and frankly, I like it better because I'm not really fond of the blue tip, whereas this is gray. So what we need to do is just pick any color of floss. What color should we make the skirt or pants? Just pick a color. Let's go with this burgundy, and then what color top are we going to do? We have these colors, too. So we're going to pick colors here. White. Okay, so, and this is DMC Floss. It's kind of a burgundy color here. Pepper here. She got a hair color. 
Can I find a skin colour? Okay, I'm separating that out. I didn't do a great job, and I'm trying to stay on camera here. Get the end, and you don't need to separate these layers. There we go. So I'm just going to take the liquid fusion and do a bead all the way around. Lay that on the side so it's easier to get out. And just start wrapping. I know you're going to get glue all over your fingers at this point. I'm not pulling too tightly because since the glue is not really hardening, I would just pull this right off. I'm just kind of pushing it up against the level, what I already did. Pushing it up against that last row, in other words, trying to get it going here. There we go. So once we get it started, I like to do a good strip up the pin like this. And I'm trying to figure, one of the things you can do is mark where you want to stop, and I'm thinking it's right here about just after the R. So if I just hold this, I'm holding the floss in my right hand, I'm just spinning the pin. Pretty fresh glue here, so it's going to work well. said just after the R. Okay, I'm just going to snip this off, finish gluing that end down, and then I'm going to start my next color. And we weren't sure whether to use white for a shirt or blouse or the pink. I think we're going to try the pink. I'm in, okay, why don't you take the um, papers off of that? My handy assistant. I need to hire her to help me with all my videos. How much would you pay me? <laughs> I'll pay you in food. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, and I need to go up until I get to where I want to get the face, which is just under my, where my ink pen, my ink starts. Right about where that ink um, and ink cartridge is is where I'm going to um, do the skin tone. I'd like to get some more flesh tones instead of just all this peachy color. Yeah. I know I'm not peach. <laughs> You're not peachy. I'm not so peachy. Peachy keen. Show you this one has a little sequin here, like a little decoration. You can do that. Add little flowers like your uh, worry dolls are wearing jewelry, necklaces. Let's do the arms. Okay. So I did that, but I need to add the arms, and we've been using toothpicks for the arms, and I have the square ones. I'm going to use this as a guide here as to how long they need to be. Not very long at all. I need to get the tips off. And I think that's about right. So I will measure this for you. Let me use my craft mat. It's about one and three quarters inches. And so let's get this one to cut those tips off. So what we're going to do is find where the prettiest side forward. I'm going to glue just the, just the top of the arms into this. Right below 
the neck. Hold that. Can you hold the pen right there? Well, I... That's okay. She's off camera, but she's holding my pen for me. <laughs> okay. And then one on the other side. Just want to get those to hold for a sec. And then I will take the pink back around there. Okay. Let's move this lady out of the way. Unless you want to be wearing a tank top. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start right where I already have it. And then I'm going to come down around the arms. Now it is a little tough uh, getting uh, started up, oops, sorry, up onto the toothpicks themselves. So sometimes you have to go around a couple times to really cover the very tops of the toothpicks there to give the shoulders. She's bald. She is bald. So um, I just want to give you a couple ideas as far as hair. I know I talked about it, but I know lift her up here so she's not uh, gluing to the paper here. Um, we have this dark color we're going to use for the hair, I think. Dark chocolate brown. A um, couple things you could do is just make several long strands and braid them together. Then take that braid and just drip, drape it right over the top of the head and glue it down. And that would be really cute. Little like pigtail braids. Um, you can also do a braid and put the front of it down like bangs and hang the back off. Some of these, the hair is actually glued, glued on strand by strand. I don't have that kind of patience. <laughs> uh, should we do a braid? What do you think? Sure. You're the one doing it. I'm not really sure how long to make that braid. You know, there's a probably a formula as to how much you, how long you should make something. I want it to be about this long when it's all said and done, but braiding shortens it. So I'm going to try this. And I'm trying to think. Um, let's just get a several strands of this. I think I need to make my number divisible by three, right? So maybe nine of them. Okay, and what we want to do, is that going to be enough? Yeah, I think when I get the braid done. I'm not sure. We'll see. Um, is to tie, go ahead and tie one end off. So let's get uh, maybe some of this. Yeah, this is going to be a little um, thin. I think if I were to do this again, I would do it with 12. Yep, it's not enough. Okay, let me go ahead and get three more now because I can tell I'm not happy with this. Let's see if I can... Maybe even 15. There. Yeah, it's definitely not enough, so I'm going to add to it. I thought I might as well just stop now instead of doing the whole thing and saying I didn't like it. So we have 15 strands. We need three sections of braid, so there's going to be five in each. This is about 10 inches long. Okay, need your hand holding that now. So let's dedicate this video to our friend Annie and her husband. Um, friends that we spent time with over this weekend and had a great time. They were wonderful hosts. Okay. Okay, Annie, this is for you. <laughs> I'm cutting off the ends here, as you notice.
That did not. The thing about these scissors, the Tim Holtz scissors, they are great for cutting really tough things like chipboard and stuff, but they're not detail scissors for cutting fine things. Um, and so that's because I use it for, for heavy duty things. Okay, so here we go. We have got this braid. All we do is glue it on top of her head. If you want bangs, all you have to do is glue a few of them on here, like glue some on the top of the head and just glue bangs like in strips this way. Let's go ahead and add this to our delightful little girly. Right there. Sort of find the middle of our braid. It's right there and just glue it down over the top. That's all you have to do. Actually, but to make it help stay down, I'm going to put a little glue down the side on that one and a little on this side. Yeah, because we just do on the middle top instead. Yeah, if I just put on the top, they're going to flip up like wings. Now, you remember in my shop, I just started carrying those itty bitty buttons. How cute would those be uh, down her top? I got to get her hair on straight. Her hair was twisted. Okay, so I am going to have my assistant hold on to the hair just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere and I will be right back. Okay, now we think she's pretty well um, dried in the front. She can be handled anyway. Just pick whichever way you like to be the front. And I think I'm going to use this glue again to give her a couple little buttons on her blouse here. There we go. Okay, so if you have a little tiny flower, you could add that to her. Instead of this, you could put a little flower in her hair. But how cute is that? They make really fun gifts to give to your friends. Do them in a swap. How about that? Worry doll pen swaps. Anyway, so this has been a blast from the past, and we just really took our time working the way through this because we haven't made these in so long. We kind of had to think through it and talk through it. and Really an affordable project, big pens, toothpicks, and embroidery floss. And, you know, a lot of times the craft stores will make their embroidery floss go on sale. So get your hand in here, Miss Michelle. Thank you, everyone, for watching. And again, this video is dedicated to Annie. Okay, got it. If I just look at you. No, you got to look... <laughs> Try to look there. You can look over there now and then. Okay. <laughs> All right. You need that in the All right. All right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Just you could introduce yourself. and I'm not going to say this to Michelle. You're going to say this to Michelle. <laughs> okay. Sorry.